So when these first surfaced, they were dubbed the Ultra Boost Killers, and are these more comfortable than the Adidas Boost? Because you could see the Boost is strong with this one, but is there such thing as too much Boost or not? Let's go ahead and find out in this video. What is going on guys? This is Hess from CollectiveKicks.com. Welcome to the channel and thank you guys for checking out the video. This is going to be a follow-up video to the 9317 EQT support. And basically I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on this shoe on whether it is worth it or not after three months. And this will kind of have my pro and con list in this video. So hopefully you guys like this series. It seems like you guys really like the Vapor Max video that I did of this. So hopefully you guys continue to support these type of videos. I have a couple more pro and con videos on the way. So stay tuned to the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. And make sure you hit the notification so you can see when I post my videos. But this is the pair of sneakers that we are going to be discussing. The 9317s. This is the very first colorway that ended up releasing back in, I think, the end of January. And it's a really, really dope model. This is one of those models that have so much boost. I remember the very first images of the shoe, I was just like blown away by the size of the boost on the midsole. It looked way bigger than anything we have seen on the market. And, um, and that's including the Ultra Boost. And I just, it was definitely a shoe that I needed to check out. But there's definitely been some pros and some cons to this model. And hopefully I'll break that down for you guys in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start off with the pros and the first things first is you can tell boost is really life in this shoe. It is boosty as all heck. It's really like the upper sits on top of all of this boost and it's completely surrounded all around it. It's also really, really thick along the sides as you can see right here. It's just so much boost and you can feel it. You can definitely feel the boost in the shoe. In my opinion, it's definitely the most boosty ride on the market. I love the overall aesthetic of the boost. I think that the layout of the boost looks really nice and the fact that it has a little bit of a futuristic vibe to it as well as um, some three stripe branding that's pretty subtle in the midsole. I think all around it's a pretty clever looking pair of sneakers. So you can see that these are actually prime knit as well which is also another reason why these are pretty comfortable. But you can see on this side there is suede on this and then on the back they use a different kind of a neoprene type material on the back tabs. So it doesn't have prime in it on the entire upper but it does have some on the toe box area which is definitely noticeable. So another pro about this model is it's actually getting a lot of collabs it seems like. We saw the white mountaineering collab in the blue colorway. Now there's a new collab that's going to be on the way as well. I believe it's from Overkill or something but basically that one looks really really solid also and it has a little bit of a different vibe than the general released pairs. Another pro about the shoe is it's just a really great reimagination of the EQT series and you can see that it definitely has the uh, inspiration from the kind of retro pair but it has a very futuristic vibe with the boost and whatnot on the shoe as well and the prime knit so I think that all in all this is definitely a, a cool a kind of a crossover shoe from the OG type to a new futuristic look. So at this point, let's go ahead and get into some of the cons about this pair of sneakers. So starting off in the cons, we have kind of an unsupportive sort of feeling on this boost. It's almost too much boost, and that's why I pose the question, is there such thing as too much boost or not? It almost feels like there's too much boost in this, at least in my opinion. It just doesn't feel very supportive. It's like, it's great that you're walking on giant pillow clouds, but if you're looking for enough support on those clouds of boost to walk down the street without feeling like it's just a little bit too much, I feel like this one is almost pushing that threshold where it's almost too much boost because it's so much. It's just so much boost. But I mean, I always think that that boost is a great thing. And I've, you know, I've mentioned this many times. Boost is like pizza. All pizza is good. But maybe you can have too much pizza. I don't know. But I feel like this is one of those things where a, a side effect of, of all of the boost is the lack of support. And that's the way it feels, at least on my feet. You guys can leave some comments in the comment section, though. And let me know am I crazy or not, especially for any of these cons or any of the pros. If you have any more to add, just leave them in the comment section because I might not get them all. Obviously, these are just strictly off of um, kind of my opinion. Another thing that I really don't love about this shoe, and I mentioned this in the review of the shoe, is the wrapped tongue. I think that this kind of is a nuisance in a sense where it kind of sticks up and it looks a little odd and it just doesn't sit down very easily. It wraps around and it just kind of digs into the side right here. All in all, it just feels weird. I just wish that they wouldn't have wrapped it. They would have made it just normal, but really it just does this and um, it does feel a little bit awkward when uh, you're wearing these things. So one of the biggest cons in my opinion, and I'm not sure if anybody else has actually seen this or not, or if I, this is just me in my pair. But I've definitely experienced this boost crease across the shoe. There's really a huge gash along this side right here of the shoe. 
and it's so deep that it's like actually cut into the shoe. I don't know if I stub my foot on something or if it's just maybe too much like weight on the shoe. Maybe I'm too heavy for these, I don't know. But it really squishes down almost and because it protrudes outwards, I feel like it's actually being squished all the way down and rubbing against the uh, rubber on the sole. So it's like it's pinching the boost against itself and then it's causing a little bit of disruption right here. Again, leave a comment, let me know if I'm crazy. Have anybody else experienced that boost crease or not? For me, it was definitely something that I noticed and it happened after the first wear of this pair. It wasn't like over time, it just it really happened after the first wear, I was kind of shocked. I do have my other pair out here also and I have only worn these ones once and the boost got a little bit funky as well. This time it happened on the back section right here and I feel like this back section is definitely gonna get the most wear on the shoe. But this back section definitely gets the worst of it, I think, because of that placement of the boost, which is another one of the cons. I think, although I like the overall look of the shoe and kind of the aggressive lines, I feel like they probably hinder the shoe a little bit too because that sticks out so far on the back that it actually causes the boost crease that I ended up seeing, as well as on the sides, it does the same thing. It, it causes that boost crease because of the protruding boost on the crazy looking shape. So it's like, cool, I really like the look of it, but then I'm like, oh man, I don't really like the side effects of what it's actually offering. It's very unfortunate, but it's definitely something I wanted to point out to you guys that are new on the market. And if you're a heavier set like me, maybe um, this might be an issue for you guys as well. So how is the sizing of these? These ones are a size nine. These ones are a size nine and a half. It's definitely important to go true to size. These ones are just a little bit too small. I can still rock these, but they're just too snug. And for the amount of comfort that I want out of the shoe, you really gotta go true to size to make it more comfortable in my opinion. So probably the last con about these shoes is the outsole traction. It's not continental rubber. It's actually very minimal traction. So if you're looking for something more like the Ultra Boost where it has that continental rubber, you're not gonna get that from these. This is more like a little bit better than NMD traction. So if you're looking for something with traction, it does not have a lot and this stuff will eventually wear uh, thin pretty quick. So after three months of rocking these on and off, are they worth buying or not? I think the answer is gonna be a yes, but it also depends on your situation. If you only are allowed one pair of sneakers for the entire school year, these are gonna look super beat by the end of the year. I think the boost placement alone on these will be enough for you to want to go ahead and get an Ultra Boost instead. The Ultra Boost gets dirty, but not as dirty as this will get in the long run, in my opinion. And there's gonna be some wear spots because of that placement where it's gonna be very, very noticeable on your sneakers. If you can afford to buy multiple pairs of sneakers, should you add this one to your rotation? I think yes, it's definitely a comfortable shoe. It's not made for all situations. It's definitely more on the casual side. If you need something more diverse, Ultra Boost is definitely the way to go. Pure Boost is also another great option for that. But from a casual perspective, these are great. I wore them in Hawaii, like they're super comfortable. It's not like my feet were aching or anything like that after wearing these, there's just a couple little nuances about the shoe that make it not perfect. And at the end of the day, some of these critiques are a bit hypercritical, but I really had to be as critical as possible for those people out there that are looking to buy a pair. I want you guys to kind of get an idea what you're gonna be buying if, if that is something that you're interested in doing. I still think it's a great shoe. I still like the aesthetics. I did not know before I bought these that the, um, the boost might be a hindrance on the placement. And I think that that is unfortunate. Also, I never thought there, there could be a pair of sneakers with too much boost. And in this case, I think the boost adds to the lack of stability of the feel of the overall ride of the shoe, but it could just be again, the placement of where the boost is. Maybe it's the same amount of boost is okay. Just put it in a different location or in a different shape and you're gonna be good to go. At the end of the day, I'm still happy I caught both pairs of these. Don't throw away your Ultra Boost just yet though. These things are good, but not a replacement for Ultra Boost in my opinion. But if you guys are actually interested in buying a pair of these, check some links in the description. It will redirect you to some places out there like eBay and Stadium Goods that you can actually buy these from uh, in stock. So that is my follow-up review of these shoes. Hopefully you guys again like this series. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have a suggestion for another pair of sneakers that you guys would like to see a follow-up review on. I already have one planned for the Ultra Boost, Yeezy Boost 350 V2, and the Pure Boost. Keep the other suggestions coming. Those ones are from you guys though. I appreciate y'all. And this review came from you guys as well. So thank you guys for contributing to my channel and helping me create my content for you guys. Much appreciated. Thank you again for watching. And we will catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace guys.